So another way to check if a set of vectors are linearly independent or linearly dependent um, is to first construct a matrix A where A um, its column vectors. We take these sets of vectors and we make them the column vectors of this matrix A, right? And then we for, then to check if this uh, if these sets of vectors or the column vectors of A are linearly independent or dependent is to calculate the determinant of A. And so we calculate the, the determinant of A. And if the determinant of A is equal to zero, then um, we know that these sets of vectors are linearly um, dependent. However, um, if the determinant of A is not equal to zero, then we know that the columns, column vectors are linearly independent. So this also means that um, if, so like if, uh, if you have this matrix A, if A is um, singular or, you know, not invertible, um, then, uh, then A is linearly dependent. And so that's very interesting. Uh, if A is a singular matrix and the determinant, we know that singular matrices have determinants equal to zero. And if we also know that singular matrices are not invertible, uh, matrices with determinants equal to zero and matrices that are not invertible uh, have a linearly uh, dependent set of, of vectors. The matrix itself um, is, is linearly dependent. And so let's, let's see this with an example, right? Let's see how we can, um, to do this, right? And so, and also it'll help us, uh, you know, rehash or remember how to take the determinant. And so we have this example, okay, where we have V1, it's really long one, is equal to this vector, V2 is equal to this one, V3 is equal to this one, negative seven and three. And now what we do is we construct A, where A is going to be, you know, I'll take V1, put it right here, three, one, one. Okay, and then we take the, we calculate the determinant of A. Let me uh, get like some space here. That should be good. And so the, the determinant of A Right, it's going to be equal to, well, we take one here and multiply that by the determinant of its submatrix, and we continue that process. And so it's going to be one times the determinant of one, negative seven, one, three. And then we subtract, do the minus sign, and then we do three times its submatrix, which is two, zero, negative seven, and three. Alternating signs, we do a plus, and then we do four times its submatrix, which is two, one, zero, one. Um, the determinant of these submatrices, uh, I don't want to confuse it with actually multiplying it by that matrix. And so the determinant here is three minus negative seven. All right. And then here we got three times six, and then plus four times two. And this is all going to be equal to 10 minus 18 plus eight. So this is gonna be equal to zero. And so we can see that this is a linearly dependent, oof, linearly dependent set, right? And as an exercise, I would, I would challenge you to, um, you know, try to put this uh, matrix into reduced row echelon form and uh, solve for the coefficients the way we did in the last example and see if you can construct the coefficients that would make the equation um, you know c1 v1 plus c2 v2 plus c3 v3 be equal to zero and so definitely uh, give that a shot